All right, so let's turn to the next stage of the argument. We have an initial framing of uh, employer employer relation or employee relationship that says there's no need for a minimum wage. Uh, counter argument that uh, argues that that's an unrealistic way about looking at employment and justifying a minimum wage. The next step of the debate is then for the first side to criticize the arguments for minimum wage. So let's call that position number three. Now this side will say, uh, as a matter of counter argument, that if we have a minimum wage, right, it might be uh, justified positively by arguments like this, but that there are unintended long-term consequences of minimum wages that uh, must be taken into account. And this position will argue that those long-term unintended consequences of minimum wage are negative. And so they, uh, they uh, militate against the advocacy of a minimum wage. So this side will then say, suppose hypothetically or realistically, as the case may be, we have a minimum wage that's put in place, right? Or we have a minimum wage increase. And that's the uh, first thing that happens. Anytime right, we uh, intervene right, in the market, there are going to be uh, responses and reactions that will filter their way through the market. And this side will say, if we're going to analyze the case, then we have to really look at two kinds of responses to this. Right? There's a buyer and a seller changing the price of the product or service or commodity uh, in, in, in involved always uh, changes how both sides, the buyer and the seller in the transaction, will react. So what we need to do is ask, how will then employers react to changes in the minimum wage? The other side of the transaction is, of course, the employees. Employees now find, as a result of the minimum wage, their economic circumstance has been altered. And so we have to ask, how will employees react? And so what will happen on the demand side and what will happen on the supply side of the equation? All right, the first point uh, that is made by this side of the argument is that employers then notice immediately that their costs right, have gone up. Just to make some arbitrary working example, suppose I have a, a medium to large size factory and I employ uh, a million, or sorry, a thousand workers, right? And the minimum wage is increased a dollar per hour for my, uh, for my employees. I've got a thousand of them. If they're working 50 weeks a year for 40 hours a week, that's two a thousand hours of work per year. Uh, and so I've got two million hours of labor each year, but each hour now costs me a dollar more. So my labor costs for the coming year are two million dollars higher than they were the previous year. So my costs have gone up. And as an employer, my natural question is, all right, what do I do about this uh, uh, increased cost? Now suppose we uh, say I've done my business prognostications for the coming year, and I don't think market conditions are going to change dramatically in any other area. The only significant factor is the increase in my labor costs. So what am I going to do? Well, there are a number of things that I as an employer could do. One thing, of course, I could do is find a way to reduce employee benefits. So I might say, currently my employees have uh, certain benefits. Maybe they have a, a health care package or a dental package, or maybe they have matching tuition at a, at a local college or they have a certain number of uh, paid vacation days or paid statutory holidays. What I would do is then look at all of the other benefits that go to employers and say, is there a way that I can cut with respect to all of those other benefits in a way that will save me the $2 million or whatever the amount works out to me? So the point here is that I, as an employer, can reduce employees' benefits. Right? And some employees will do exactly that. Now, to the extent that I do that, this position will then say the minimum wage really hasn't benefited employees. Yes, they are getting more take-home pay as a result of the increase in the minimum wage, but at the same time, their benefits have been reduced by an on average corresponding amount. And so that then is to say that we end up with uh, a net zero. The employers, or sorry, employees haven't really gained as a result of the minimum wage. All right, what I can also do as an employer is, uh, in some cases, just lay people off. Uh, layoffs can come in a number of forms. One thing I can do is just say, well, you know, uh, there are certain employees that maybe they were worth it to me when the minimum wage was, say, $5 an hour, but they're not really worth it to me at $6 an hour. And so I will just lay off the people who I don't think are worth the new amount. Another way uh, of doing so might be to take uh, full-time positions 
and uh, reduce them to half-time positions uh, scrim in that particular way. And what these then mean is immediately, uh, since employees as a, as a group are working less, we have increased unemployment. Right? We either have underemployment, people working fewer hours than they otherwise would, or uh, people who are just completely out of a job. It might be the case that uh, I am an employer and I have a business and uh, maybe I'm not particularly profitable and there are always going to be at any given time any number of businesses that are just scraping by. So maybe last year I was profitable but when uh, the accountants gave me the final dollars it turns out that we made $117 last year. And our prognostication for this coming year is that we're going to be pretty much the same. So I'm still profitable, I'm still scraping along, I can still stay in business, but if a minimum wage comes along and says, oh, now I need to look at a $2 million uh, increase in my, my, uh, my wages bill, well, this time next year, I'm going to be uh, in the red for almost $2 million. I will be bankrupt or flirting with bankruptcy. And so what will happen to some employees is they will just simply go out of business. Right? They won't wait right, for actual bankruptcy and debt to occur. Instead, they'll just close their doors and go out of business. And then the clear implication here is those ones that do go out of business, uh, they lay off their workers, and so there's unemployment. What I might also do as an employer is think hard about outsourcing. I might say, okay, the minimum wage has increased in the United States, or if it's a state level increase, whatever my state is, Illinois in this case here, I will look to neighboring states. Uh, are the minimum wage uh, regulations less in Indiana or Iowa or Wisconsin and maybe relocate my operations there? If it's a federal level minimum wage, I might then say, all right, the price of labor in the United States now has gone up significantly. If I uh, relocate to uh, Mexico or the Philippines or abroad somewhere, uh, is that worth it to me? It might be that we were thinking about opening a new plant right here in our, our home state, and now we look more seriously at opening that new plant uh, abroad at a place where there are going to be uh, lower wages. And so outsourcing will increase as the price of wages go up, and that then means an increase in unemployment right, domestically. Another thing that we might do is look very hard at uh, technology. Uh, particularly in the case of the kinds of jobs that younger, inexperienced uh, workers are doing. They're typically very mechanical, doing the same thing over and over again. Uh, those are the kinds of things that it is uh, relatively much more easy to invent a machine or find some sort of machine that can do that mechanical same thing over and over again kind of job. And so if uh, uh, I need an N in there, if uh, my minimum wage goes up and my labor costs go up, then I'm going to look hard at buying more machinery to replace those workers. And to the extent that I think the machinery will pay for itself, then I don't need the workers to be doing that job. Unemployment increases. All right, we can add one more thing that employers might try to do. Uh, if I don't want to cut benefits or lay people off, or if I'm not necessarily being forced out of business, or I'm not uh, going to outsource or just invest in technology, one thing I can try to do is just raise my prices. If I have increased costs of whatever form, I pass those costs on to consumers. And so what I will do is then raise my consumer prices. I don't know, I'm making uh, two million framisters or widgets right at my factory per year. And my costs, I think, are going to go up uh, $2 million per year as a result of the minimum wage increase. I'll just raise the unit price that we charge consumers, a dollar or a dollar ten or something like that, to, uh, to uh, try to offset uh, the uh, increase in costs and uh, leave myself at a net zero position. Now, uh, we follow this part out, of course, if uh, prices rise, then the consequence is that consumers will buy less. We don't purchase things or as many things when they are more expensive. If we buy less uh, uh, then, uh, and we continue to manufacture stuff or produce stuff at the same rate, then our inventory piles up. At a certain point, the inventory manager says, hey, we're running out of room here. We need to cut back on inventory. So the word goes back to the production managers. We don't need to be making as much stuff, so the production managers cut back. But if we're going to be producing less, then that means that we need fewer workers to be making the stuff. And so if consumers are buying less, then that just means we are going to be uh, laying off workers or firing workers in order to make less and so forth. 
All right, now this is one half of the equation here, but this side of the argument is saying that what we end up with is not a pretty picture as far as uh, benefiting the workers go. We thought we were giving employees a raise, but the economics works out such that to the extent that we try to do that by just uh, uh, raising their minimum wage, that plays out through the system and ends up either leaving them not better off at all or driving some or many of them into unemployment, depending on how drastically we increase the minimum wage. In the economics and public policy literature, this is sometimes called an unintended consequence. And that is a uh, semi-technical term, meaning that any piece of legislation or any policy has intended consequences. We pass that regulation or we pass that piece of legislation trying to reach certain results. Uh, so we have an intention in mind. In this case, what we're intending to do with a minimum wage is help poorer, less experienced, uh, younger employees uh, make uh, more money uh, than, than they otherwise would make. This argument, though, is to say that what we're actually doing by increasing the minimum wage is making those very employees worse off because we drive a significant number of them into unemployment. And so the unintended consequence here is the exact opposite of the intended consequence. Uh, this position then says, as a summary of what we have so far, if we look at the two sides of the transaction, we can take the employers as a result of the minimum wage increase. Well, their costs have gone up and they have to do all sorts of things to try to cover those costs. So as a result, they have lost. Right? They're worse off than they otherwise would be. But the kicker for the unintended consequence argument here is that if we look at the employees in the target group, they're not better off. In fact, they're also right, worse off. So on a minimum wage on this analysis is a lose-lose policy. All right, next we also uh, should have a quick look at the employee's side of the equation. Uh, how do employees act, uh, uh, react as a result to, uh, or of rather, the minimum wage increase? Well, certainly uh, the immediate consequence here is that their increase uh, their income rather has increased. Right? So their employers have a higher cost, but employees have higher income. As a result of this, the argument runs, what they will do is be then in a position when they are consumers to uh, spend more. <clears throat> so they will increase their consumption. Perhaps, for example, I am a minimum wage worker at McDonald's. Right? I get a raise as a result of the, uh, the minimum wage legislation. I look at my take-home pay and it's more. So I then might decide, hey, I am going to then take my family out to, uh, to eat more often than I otherwise would. Maybe I only take them out once a week or once a month, right, or whatever. Now I can take them out twice a week or twice a month or whatever my, uh, my judgment call is. So I will spend more. Uh, this side of the argument will, though, uh, will argue, though, but if we look at what employees correspondingly are doing, many of the employers have uh, uh, reacted by raising their prices. Uh, so that means that when I am trying to spend more, when I enter into the market, I am having to pay more for the stuff that I want to purchase. So for example, I'm, the, I'm working at McDonald's, I'm earning more income, so I want to take my family out. Suppose I'm going to take my family out to Burger King or another fast food kind of restaurant. But what has happened at Burger King is that it also has been affected by the minimum wage increase. So Burger King, as the employer, has faced its increases costs. And so it raises its prices to all consumers, including me. So I right, take my family out uh, because I've got more money right, available to me, but I'm finding that I'm having to pay more for the meal out at Burger King, so I'm not really any better off. So that is uh, to wave our hands at a, an argument that leads to a lot of quantitative crunching, but the argument here is that as a result, we have another net zero. Monetarily, I have more income, but I'm spending more for the, the same uh, quantity of goods, and so I'm not any better off. The other argument here is to say that if we raise the minimum wage, 
the uh, implication is that that makes being an employee of those kinds of jobs more attractive right, to people. Right, Any time the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the amount that you will be paid for offering a service goes up, you'll have more people who are willing to offer that service. So the argument here is that a minimum wage is going to attract more people into the employment market. And what that will mean is that there will be increased competition for those minimum wage jobs. For example, if uh, we have a minimum wage, uh, say, are at $5 an hour, maybe I am a retired person and I'm on a fixed income, and I think, well, maybe I will go uh, and get a part-time job, say, at Walmart as a greeter for $5 an hour. Maybe I'll do it for four hours a day, so that would mean I would earn an extra $20 per day. Is that worth it to me? Maybe. Uh, but if the minimum wage goes up, and now uh, Walmart is going to pay $6 an hour for greeters, then to a significant number of senior citizens, earning $6 an hour is going to be more attractive to them than, uh, than earning $5 an hour. So more senior citizens then will re-enter the job market in order to get those, uh, the, the additional wages right, that are possible. But what that means is that the young people, right, or the other inexperienced and poorer people who are competing for greeter jobs at Walmart also have increased competition from other people that otherwise would not have been in the market. And what that means is that since uh, the number of jobs as Walmart greeters is fixed for purposes of analysis here, that uh, some of the younger people who uh, might have gotten jobs as Walmart greeters won't get jobs. Walmart will hire older people, or they will hire uh, uh, any sort of other person who's looking for a supplemental income. Maybe it'll be full-time people who have day jobs, but they, uh, they're ambitious, and so they want to uh, have a part-time job in the, in the evening. Uh, young, inexperienced people will also be competing with those people. So, point just is that people who are facing increased competition, some of them are going to lose in that competition, and some of those will be the very people that we are trying to help by a minimum wage, and so those people will end up in, uh, in, uh, in a higher employment situation. So, again, reinforcing this claim here from both sides, the, uh, the demand side and the supply side of the equation, that the minimum wage is a lose-lose. All right, we'll draw a line there.